so now we're going to start working on fixing the uh, location of this particular uh, pillow block right here. Um, so first thing we're going to have to do, obviously, is get all the surface rust off of this. Uh, then we can loosen up those two set pins there and then go ahead and try to pull this all the way out. Um, what I was talking about earlier and what the problem I have is the fact that you can see how yeah, you see how far that pillow block is away from that shaft. That is way, way too far. Uh, I knew it when I did it, but I thought I could get away with it. Uh, so what's going to happen here is we're going to add on um, some tubing on two spots. We're going to come over. Uh, I can't obviously I can't add to this section because of the uh, the rod. So we're going to come over here, and then we're going to drop down and try to. Um, if I can show you here. We're going to try to drop down and then get that pillow block to where it's basically right here, right behind where the uh, guard sits. Because the guard sits, um, kind of see there, the guard kind of sits somewhere right about here. So if I can get the pillow block to here, that's within about three inches, which should be good enough. Um, so we're going to have to come uh, pretty, pretty far over. We're going to come over with some pretty good tubing come straight off here and then down to where it's level uh, with this. And then we'll have to redo the bolts here and obviously uh, the uh, tensioning system I have. So, all right, so my first thought to clean this was uh, emery cloth, which I don't have any, and then some fine sandpaper. But I think we're gonna give this a shot first. Now we're going to hit with the little WD-40 just to kind of make it easier to get out of the pillow box. Alright. So apparently the way I've got them in there, the way I've got it tensioned, it's got a little bind in it. So we're going to go ahead and loosen all this up. All right, took some persuasion, but I finally got it off. What I ended up having to do was lower them both down, tap the back one off, and then it slid out the front, no problem. So it looks like there was a little groove on the back one, didn't want to let go. So I'll need to clean that up. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean this shaft up as well. So now, what we need to do now is go ahead and pull this pillow block off that's right here, and we're gonna clean this up and start taking measurements, to figure out how well, how far we gotta come over and down to end up somewhere right in here. All right, so a couple of little things I looked at here. First, I thought about putting some tubing and running across here and then hanging it out and then dropping down. But um, after looking at it, I think it's gonna be better if we go ahead and um, just take some flat bar and come in and weld the flat bar on the bottom there and then also weld the flat bar on the top and then just basically come over and then box it in. Uh, I can come straight off that the face of it here come over about four and a quarter inches and that gets me just shy of the, of the, of the actual guard here. So we're going to go ahead and work on doing that. Um, I was really hoping I could probably take this thing off and work on it, but um, because I have this plate and everything on here, it's not coming off. So we're going to have to work on this thing uh, and it's <laughs> on the sawmill, which is going to be a little more eventful. Uh, luckily, we can raise it up with the tractor and get it pretty high and uh, be able to work on this. But uh, you can see I went ahead and took off the the, um, the, the adjustable rod. Um, and so we're going to have to um, add the plate going across here and then go ahead and cut these off and then relocate them uh, farther over.
All right, so I've got the uh, first plate welded on here, uh, or just should they just tacked on. Um, and then I went ahead and I put it on top of it um, just because I wasn't too sure I wanted just to go with the butt weld uh, here. Uh, I am going to go with the butt weld on this part here, um, mainly because I think with this being welded uh, on the bottom here and on the top and overlapped, uh, I don't think it'll be a problem here. And then this is going to come down and we'll box this in. Um, so now I need to work on uh, cutting this piece that's going to sit here and come down between the two. I'm going to go ahead and tack that on and then that'll help me give me something to hold this up to and then tack it on as opposed to trying to figure out how to clamp it. All right, so the next thing I have to do is figure out how far or how thick this plate needs to be. It's going to weld, um, it's going to weld on the, I think it's going to weld to the face here, yeah. So it's going to weld to the face of this here and then come down. So. What I do is I get the measurement here, and I am it looks like two and five eighths, because I'm welding it here, and then I'm going to go on top of this plate here. Yeah. So this plate will mount like this, which takes up a quarter inch of space. So that negates this being on top. So two and five eighths, uh, it's going to need to be probably just going to make it this width here. There's no need to come all the way out. So we'll just, med we'll just go across here and then bring it down, I think. All right, so now I need to go ahead and put this this last piece in here, but I needed something to be able to hold it parallel to the other side. And so I've got these uh, inch and a quarter tubing that I've got clamped on. Uh, it's a big C-clamp uh, and a C-vice clamp. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to slide it up in there, get it in position, and then go ahead and tack it. But I don't have to go and cut everything else out again. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my tack here and here so I can lower it down. I'd rather make contact with it and then I can fix it any be square. Now we're, I can squeeze it down, we'll make contact here, and then I can weld that in. All right, so I've got all the uh, plate, the quarter inch plate all tacked in there um, with my MIG welder. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a stick weld uh, because this is quarter inch thick, and I like to get a little more penetration, and then I've got a few gaps that are a little more than I'd like to do for a MIG, and it takes a lot of wire to do that. So. Uh, I've got these uh, 6011 that we're going to use and go ahead and finish this up. Beautiful, but uh, I never claimed to be a welder, so 
Do a little bit of grinding here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put another little pass with the MIG just to kind of clean this up here. So we got the box all welded up on there and kind of cleaned up. I'm still gonna have to hit it with the flap disc, but uh, got most of it cleaned up. All right, and so then we gotta get up in here and weld on um, the two studs. Um, I went ahead and marked across um, where the holes are gonna be. And so what I did was I took this uh, angle iron and stuck it on the back bolt where it is and then on where the front one used to be. And that gave me a reference point. Um, for the inside of both where the holes were. And then I went ahead and remeasured uh, the center to center and it came out with like five and seven sixteenths. So I've gone off and measured five and seven sixteenths from here to here. And then I went ahead and prepped the bolts. So uh, I've got some, uh, using reusing one of the old ones and then I made a new one. Uh, it's important that when you're welding up something, uh, bolt to something like this here, either you have to drill through it and weld from the backside or you need to bevel it uh, at least half, if not a little more, um, so that you got good penetration weld. Uh, you can't butt weld this thing flat to that surface and expect it to hold with this much tension. Uh, it's just too much. So to make a stronger weld, you bevel it down. Uh, I go about at least halfway. And then uh, that way we've got half penetration on the inside and then I'm gonna uh, build it out here. And so it should get plenty of strength in here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, tack these on. Once they're tacked on both sides, then we'll come in, test fit the pillow block, make sure everything's good and it moves across where it needs to and doesn't uh, affect the front, and then we'll go ahead and permanently weld them. Make sure it's straight up and down or at least close to that gear. this one in this direction just a little bit. There we go. Got a little bit out of it. Go ahead and finish welding this out and uh, get it cleaned up and go ahead and install. All right, so we got the shaft cleaned up, everything ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the pillow blocks back in and then we'll get the shaft in there. Go ahead and uh, measure off of the, uh, the frame to the front of the wheel on the other side and then match this one on the same at the same distance and then I'll put in my locking pins and we'll go ahead and tighten everything up. So I've got everything uh, put back together and mounted and gave a little test run there and got it adjusted. Um, it's riding uh, just a hair farther than I'd like but it's stable right there so I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Um, but overall, I think this is going to be a much better uh, long-term solution than what I had. Uh, this gets where there's only about three and a half inches maybe um, from the pillow block to the actual wheel. 
Uh, that helps out a great deal for me to be able to tighten it up. So now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, the guard back on, uh, the guards I should say plural, and then get it back mounted on there. And then we need to go ahead and uh, verify that uh, we're still parallel to the ground after we made uh, these additions here, make sure everything's still good. Mm -hmm. 